Hey, everybody. We are live at Pace Studios with the Coat Hangers from Atlanta, Georgia right now, the, uh, the birthplace of Pace Magazine as well. Thank you very much for doing this. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, it's great to see you again. We were you uh, came by in 2016, I think it was when you got when you're touring behind uh, Nosebleed Weekend, mm -hmm. and now you are back here in front of these same tapes, but a new location. Uh, you're doing four off of the Devil You Know, which is out right now on Suicide Squeeze, and we're looking forward to hearing it. Um, yeah, can you tell us what you're going to start out with? We're going to start out with Lithium. It's a uh, it's a song about uh, solutions, possible solutions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This sounds great. Okay. And uh, and cheers to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming yeah, and doing yeah. this. Cheers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we um. So. Well, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, so the you got you've been around as a band for 13 years doing this thing. Can we talk a little bit about the like the just the friendship, the community, the everything that's allowed you guys to to thrive for this long? And um, and yeah, can we talk about the the importance of that of that com camaraderie to uh, to this group? We just grew up together in a van. 
<laughs> and it's just, yeah. I mean, a lot of bands, you know, quit after a while, and, and we just refuse to quit. Because <laughs> we love playing together, so it's like, we love writing music together, so. And we knew each other beforehand, so. Uh, how many times can I say so? Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, what do you we guys... just keep it going, because why not? It's better than getting a real job, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do this. This best is awesome. Best job on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best job on the planet, so. Uh, yeah. d- is there any like extra effort, special effort that has to go into it as you move across the country, or is it just All is it just easy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us are difficult to deal with, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we just get through it. We're like sisters, so yeah, just get through it and have a good time and laugh it off. Cool. Well, it seems that way. It comes across on stage, <laughs> um, uh, and we enjoy it very much. Can you tell us what you're going to play second off of the Devil You Know? <clears throat> We're going to play Bimbo. It's a song about, about me. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, can we can we talk a little bit about? So you play loud and sweaty rock and roll music for mm-hmm. audiences, and can we talk a little bit about? So this sounds outstanding in this arrangement in oh. our civilized thank tape you. tape That's tape library you. in a yeah. quieter arrangement. Can you talk a little bit about? I mean, how how do you do that? I think you do it better than than most other artists wow. translating the energy <laughs> from. I feel great. Someone right painting it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. We just one time we did an acoustic set because we had to in Italy and we were like, oh, we actually can do this. This is pretty fun. And the songs translate well. So that's when we were like that started offering acoustic sets as an option for things because um, we just never tried it before. So I don't know. I Have don't you ever know done a to... series of house shows or considered doing that? Like the, the, the living room, the living room thing? Like yeah, this? there's like a one in Long Beach that does that living room shows and stuff. Um yeah, that's a, it's a cool, it, I think you actually can hear more 
of what the songs are about because sometimes when you're like loud and aggressive people just see that and they don't actually hear like the content of the songs which you know I think is, is cool and important it feels a little bit more intimate cool well thanks for sharing it yeah, yeah. with us we appreciate it and loud and loud and sweaty and aggressive is yeah. happening at asbury lanes tonight it's yeah. happening at music hall of williamsburg tomorrow night back here in uh, in brooklyn you're going to be in washington dc on friday and then philly on saturday at underground arts and then you head off to to europe soon thereafter yeah, so like four days will... after <laughs> we're playing brighton yeah yeah um cool can you tell us what you're going to do third off the album we're going to do Crimson Telephone. And it's about <clears throat> the, the phone and how it's infiltrated your life. The, the new phone, not the old phone. The <laughs> new phone. And I had, I had a red cover on it. So it's like Crimson Telephone. Right. So it's all about the aspects of that, how they track you and how everyone knows everything now and how scary it is. <laughs> it's scary. It's scary. It's so scary. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Meredith signaled signaled very well. That was uh, thank you. Thank you for yeah. the be beginning of the applause. Can we talk a little bit? You guys, you're not doing FDNRA today, right? No. Or you're not doing it. But can we? We'll talk about it anyway. We'll drop a link to that to that music video <laughs> in the in the comment section so people can check it out because yeah. it's awesome. And yeah. along with the um, the essay that you wrote about it with Kathleen Hanna yeah. with a number of other of other artists as well. Um, can you tell people about it? And we'll drop a link into the comment section right now. Oh, yeah. Um, Fuck the NRA was like 
written last year, you know, obviously in the midst of all these shootings and everything. And it was like, it was just, a, we were so frustrated. There was like a, an air of frustration at that point. And, um, and then when we wrote it, it was like kind of like our old school selves, like, oh yeah, fuck this, fuck that. And people were like, oh, you should probably like not say fuck the NRA because they're a serious, you know, threatening sort of association. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, so maybe we need to like write, you know, something along with it to sort of explain it because it wasn't, it's not like fuck guns or fuck whatever. It's like, no, you shouldn't have fear mongers in your society that like sort of twist your perception of reality and make you afraid to live without a weapon, you know? So that's what that song is about. And, you know, that. The essay was really interesting to write because the, talking to all these people, you got a real sense of fear of speaking out on subjects like that, you know? You can write a song about, dude, like, fucking anything in the world, you know, literally fucking anything in the world, like, sex with whatever, but you can't, you know, people are afraid to um, speak politically sometimes, openly like that, like, blatantly. Yeah. So that was a really interesting experience, but we have been met with nothing but positivity about it because it's hopefully a thoughtful song and not just like an angry, whatever. It is an angry song, though. Yeah. <laughs> but a thoughtful, uh, yeah, but a thoughtful angry yes. song. You can both. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's cathartic. And yeah, at shows, it's really awesome because everyone gets into it. Everyone likes to say, fuck the NRA. Like, <laughs> how you feel it, you know? It's like, yes. And that was the whole point to create a positive place where we can express all that and then have a beer and, like, you know, enjoy our lives. And yeah. Be, like, pent up. Totally. I mean, without. Yeah. Yeah, her mom was mom. singing along. Watch out. Miss Frank It's cool. It's good. Yeah, it's good. well, good for you. I'm, I'm glad that that, you. that happened and that the, the people who participated in it with you also also jumped on board. Yeah. And that Kathleen Hanna connection makes the most sense in the world. So yeah. that's great that that, that happened. Uh, thanks for doing it. It's an important thing to say. And we're stoked to use this platform to, to amplify it any way we possibly oh, can. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll link to that essay right now in the in the comment section. Beautiful. Um, can you tell us what you're going to do last off of The Devil You Know? Last is a song called Five Farms. And it's pretty literal song about my dad's side of the family fucking him over, including five farms. So it's literally about farms. <laughs> five of them. <laughs> five farms. <clears throat> Ready? Yeah. Take what you can, 
thank you so much for coming and doing doing this on on a show day. You've got a lot going on. You're Asbury Park tonight, and then you're back here in Brooklyn at Music Hall of Williamsburg tomorrow, uh, DC on Friday, and then Philly on Saturday. It's all up at thecoathangers.com. Travel safely to Europe. Enjoy that. And there's there's Thank tons you. of dates announced even past that. So hopefully everyone who's looking <laughs> at this uh, yeah. this live stream is able to go check you out live as yeah. well. And it's a vastly different experience than what has been done here <laughs> in this in this tape library today. And both are awesome. Um, best of luck on the devil you know. Also. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. This is Here's great. to you. Here's right. to you, sir. You and Bob. And Bob. Bob's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>